Hello lovers, welcome back to the third part in this series because accidentally I made it into a series again. I just keep on making a habit of that, don't I? Sorry. Uh, so obviously today we are talking about Mel and Jerry, Jerry and Mel, the couple that everybody wants to get together because parasocial relationships can be incredibly toxic sometimes. Obviously I'm going to be addressing that massive elephant and also we're going to be talking about everything to do with them here. But I wanted to jump in here with this very autumnal look today. I know I'm kind of really here for it. Let me know if you like this because I really do. I wanted to jump in and just remind you of the trigger warnings because sadly Mel and Jerry actually possibly went through more than the other girls and there's a lot more to say about them for some sad reasons and also just speculation for everything. So trigger warnings. <laughs> Racism, homophobia, um, sycamore attempts, um, ED um, in particular with Jerry and um, really terrible mental health situations, harassment and bullying. Um, I think that covers all of it. So as you can tell, <laughs> these two went through an awful lot, all of the girls said, I don't want to minimize anybody's pain. I'm not really going into like details on stuff, but I just want you to be aware of it. And obviously I do have a more hopeful lens with all of the videos that I do. I just always think it's important telling the accurate story and actually humanizing people that have been dehumanized time and again, because I'm really not here for that sort of life. Okay, without any further ado, let's jump straight on into this video. I never thought it would it would go this, this big, but I always hope. But there was something inside me that was like, I said, you know when you have to keep it down a bit because you don't want to think, yeah, I, I think we're going to be number one in case we're not. But I can remember saying to think Jerry and Melanie at different stages throughout the week after one had been released, one had been released, and I said, that's definitely going to go to number one. And I've said that a couple of times about our singles, but I think it's, it can get a bit spoiled if you share it too many times. It's nice to have that little, I know some of you don't know. Now, Melby and Jerry were definitely the strongest in the group when it came to um, letting their voice be heard and letting their opinions be known, as you would have definitely seen in that video that you just watched. So she was born in Leeds in the UK, and her father was Caribbean. His name was Martin Brown. Rest his soul, he did pass away fairly recently. And her mother, Andrea, was white. And so, like, the bullying that they got was actually incredibly extreme. To hand me to my father when they took the bus just to stop him from possibly being beaten up by racists. You know, so I'd get chased home from school being called the worst words. And I used to say, well, I'm not any of those. I'm mixed race. I have the best of both worlds. Mm. I'm black and I am white. I, I said to my mum and dad, they've done it again. And what did they say? Sort your own fights out. Like the National Guard was pretty big at the time. It was actually very, very scary for them. Like she got chased down the streets and had to run away from school. And I don't exactly know when the diagnosis happened, but she dealt with ADHD, dyslexia, and also dyspraxia, which will also make like learning incredibly hard. I would like to say that racism is a thing of the past, but it's obviously not, as we very well know. Like even when she bought a fancy house in this nice village, uh, just on the outskirts of London, I believe, like she got hate mail threats sent to her telling her that her kind doesn't belong to live there so of course what she did was like she threw these huge parties and honestly good on her for doing that because we can't handle that sort of rubbish can we no her father had a big impact on her life it was a case of you have to fight your own battles so that's why she's so tough is from this sort of upbringing, from, from all of those struggles. And so you can really see this in the way that she does most everything. And honestly, I think that she's one of the absolute strongest girls there. She really is. Now, when she was a child, she sadly did have her first sycamore attempt at about the age of 14 because she just didn't feel like she belonged. She felt like a burden. Um, so that's really sad. But luckily her mother rushed her to hospital um, to get her stomach pumped. So that's good. <laughs> but, you know, it's... It's always interesting because people always think that celebrities are just whatever immune to stuff. If you are kind of predisposed to those sorts of things when you're a kid, getting into the cruel world of fame, it can't have been easy, especially with her relationships, which we will be getting into as well. Lightening the mood a little bit, you may also remember her from Coronation Streak. She was a recurring character on there in the early 90s. And she also studied performing arts when she was in high school. And then of course she answered the same ad that all the girls did. She was part of the original group, even though they weren't called the Spice Girls, as you well know, it was just for a girl group. But in her audition, she sung a Whitney Houston song the greatest love of all um which is Whitney's favorite song <laughs> um and also wow it takes guts to do a Whitney song in an audition and 
when the girls all lived in that house together, like her and Emma had a really good relationship, like they would have a corner night whilst the other girls were working out, sadly because of all of that terrible messaging in the 90s about, you know, EDs are good. All that terrible rubbish and they also both like jungle music so they would have parties in the kitchen now you already know that mel b shared a room with mel c and they did get along well however they did definitely get into fights as well a couple of times a bit of fisty cuffs but you know it was either emma or jerry stepping in and of course her and jerry had their own spats as well it was I mean, of course, you would get a lot if you're cramming five people into a two-bedroom and a study home. <laughs> yeah, but I don't think we should be. I just think we've got yeah, people out there. Yeah, all right, it's a mistake, it's a mistake. But you made a big mistake. I made a mistake for the moment. That's yeah, all. Yeah, you are not do that. You're the loudest on that harmony line, that's all. Oh, it was a mistake. It was a mistake. All right, you made a big mistake by going in it out. I know I did because she forgot a bit, that's why. We'll just do it again. Now, this was really interesting to me because I didn't realise this, but before they even split up, Mel B actually recorded her song, I Want You Back. Now, after the infamous split, after watching all of the interviews and all documentaries and everything that I have, along with reading everything about them, this really did affect Mel B so, so much. The Christmas song is really sad. I cried the first time I heard it, like finish and everything. I really did cry because it's sad. So obviously it's about Jerry and her leaving and going her own way. She didn't give really much of an explanation to any of us. I suppose it's a bit annoying when all you're seen for is your lips and your boobs. Probably why she's changed her image as well. We'd made a pact, me and her, that if she wanted to leave, she'd tell me, or if I wanted to leave, I'd tell her, and she just left, like, all of a sudden just vanished. And I was really, really, really angry because we started this together as five and it wasn't meant to happen if it's not us five. Didn't was you? there bitterness? Yeah, for a long time between me and her. Did you forgive Layla? Yeah, but I still remind her of it. Like I saw <laughs> a couple of weeks ago and I said, do you remember when you left on what? my birthday? <laughs> Why did she do that? I think, I mean, she talks about it to this day that like she had a lot of um, like bad eating disorder, pressure problems. And she, she just felt the pressure too much, so she just decided to take a break. It's obviously because she wasn't in a good place. But we didn't did, find that, that out till way after. Mm. Did that make it better for you? That you could, you could understand why she did that then? You still couldn't? No, because I just think I wouldn't have done that. But then everybody copes with pressure and different situations differently. So I do understand it, mm. but I still, it still makes me go, oh, a you little bit. And she even said this in like their home sort of videos, um, that both her and Jerry knew the things to say to hurt each other, but because they respected each other so much, they wouldn't go there. But she did go there um, in an interview that appeared in a newspaper. And that was when you get this tearful exchange from Jerry. Melanie B quote, oh, we're really, we're stronger than ever since Jerry's left. We don't need her anymore. And to be honest, that, that says it absolutely all, that says absolutely everything. We don't need her anymore. Very obviously, I can't talk about either of these two without addressing the hugest elephant in the room um, of the fact of them having... Sexual relations with that woman. I always like to allow people to have whatever boundaries they want, so this is not going to be like an expose. Because obviously we know that when Mel B did that Piers Morgan interview, which I watched in its entirety, and oh my gosh, I hate that man so much. He just went straight in with the most hurtful questions, telling her to relive trauma repeatedly, and I'm just, I was sitting here, what? I really hate him. <laughs> but anyway, she famously had that slip up where she was saying that they like slept together one night. There were rumours that you and Jerry were you know, more than just good friends. She had great boobs. <laughs> <laughs> so you did? Well, not really. Well, you clearly <laughs> did, right? Yeah. You, said you were coming here to be brutally honest. I am being brutally honest. But did you or didn't you with Jerry Halliwell? Well, what do you consider as doing it or not? Sleep with Jerry <laughs> like that. <laughs> yes, really. She's going to hate me for this because she's all posh in a country house <laughs> with her husband. <laughs> oh, but it's the past. 
But it wasn't a thing. It just just happened, and we just giggled at it, and that was it. How many times did it? Today? Oh, stop it, you pervert! <laughs> Jerry is trying to live her posh life now. Like she, we'll talk about Jerry at the end. She's my last person to talk about because there's a lot to say about her. But Jerry kind of reinvented herself, and so that was quite challenging for Jerry to have to face up to, and she denied it for ages, which hurt Mel because Mel thought that she was denying their relationship. Now when it comes to the relationship, <laughs> we don't know for sure, despite what a mysterious source may say here and there and whatever, we don't know if they were actually in a relationship. It's been rumoured that they were in a relationship for a year. It's been rumoured, all sorts of things have been rumoured, including from one of Mel B's exes, that their relationship was much closer than what people knew about. We don't know what happened in that relationship and I am honestly comfortable with just letting them sort this out themselves because it's clearly a sensitive area for Jerry in particular. So I don't want to go saying this definitely happened or didn't because that's just useless speculation in my books but it doesn't stop all the fan cams and fan videos and fan edits of those two. You can tell that they have a really really strong bond and if they were in a relationship it's quite clear that Jerry doesn't want to admit to it. So I think it's good to respect that boundary because she's made that boundary very clear um, but of course everyone goes into this whole tailspin about it and be like that's the real reason and because Jerry was saying it's one particular person that forced her to leave and this whole conspiracy theory that Mel B got engaged or was getting married and then Jerry left and all sorts of things happened but none of us were there. <laughs> none of us know exactly what happened. What we do know is that Jerry was really struggling and that's all we can really say on the count, okay? So I will let people carry on with their fan edits but you also need to realise this is kind of impacting their real lives. <laughs> now Mel and herself did want to get famous but more to be able to have a platform which she's definitely built for herself. Like you can really see this eagerness right from the get-go in those early interviews. Like she's really kept herself in the limelight with X Factor, with movies, like way more movies than I realised that she was actually in, with Dancing in the Stars, like she starred in Chicago as Roxanne, she's got many music accolades, she's been so open on interviews as well, which people obviously invite her back on because she is so open but at the same time they're kind of like taking advantage of this just because they want her to spill the tea or whatever it's not in terms of like a we want to know you we want to allow you to have this platform if you want to it's like i want to break down every single boundary that you could possibly have and expose you on tv Ugh. <laughs> it's disgusting. And of course, along with all of her work accolades, Melby's dealt a lot with her relationships in life, like very famously with Eddie Murphy and the disgusting stunt that he pulled, trying to allege that their daughter wasn't theirs and that he wanted a paternity test. Happy with her because she's pregnant from your child, right? But now you're being presumptuous because we're not together anymore and we don't know whose child it is until it comes out and has a blood test. <laughs> you shouldn't jump to conclusions, sir and she was utterly shocked by that. They've repaired the relationship now and they've put their kid first, but at the same time he was just sort of like, are you kidding? And he apologises to this day about that because that baby was planned. We planned that baby together and we were madly in love. And of course there was so much intrigue of the fact that she was with Christine Cox for about four years and Mel herself has said that she doesn't want to put a label on it. She's attracted to who she's attracted to. So you can't go saying that she's bisexual or put whatever label on it. Your sexuality? I don't. I don't think I have to. Because you fall in love with whoever you fall in love with. And I just don't have a preference. <laughs> <laughs> so honestly, I think it's worthwhile just respecting that. And so with that, and then with the thing about Jerry, it meant that everyone just, of course, was fetishizing lesbianism because this was the 90s and the 2000s. And the only thing a woman is good for is exploiting her body. But one of the real reasons that Melby actually threw herself into so many work projects was to escape that terrible marriage that she had with Stephen Belafonte, um, who was a right piece of work and preyed on her immediately. Like she had just had her baby like three weeks before and he just preyed on her. He utterly destroyed her. My life was great when I was at work because he couldn't get to me. 
My life was great when I was on the school run with the kids. He couldn't get to me. She didn't understand all of the things that he was doing to her. He cut her off from her family. Like, it was, it was so awful, that relationship, and it went on for so many years. And she tried to sadly sycamore once again. Before she was even discharged from hospital, she discharged herself to go be on X Factor and do this famous stunt showing off the fact that she was no longer wearing her wedding ring um, to just show to him it's over. And I wanted to go on that stage because I knew I could and I wanted to go like that without a wedding ring and I wanted to make sure that my friends and my family that I had no contact with knew that I was okay on yes. some level. And sadly because she had been so estranged from her family, um, it meant that her father was on his deathbed and so she had to go and see him and told him that she was leaving this monster and his last words were I love you to her and honestly I'm just here, like I was just crying earlier. Um, that's awful. It's oh, so disgusting and it's why she's gotten so involved with Women's Aid and I think that's amazing and she's got her book Brutally Honest. I'm, I'm just really astounded at the strength of her and again, like I said, she's got so many work accolades and because of her ex spending all her money, her not knowing how to invest her money properly, um, it's meant that she has had to keep working so much and there's a lot of stigma around that but I think that she's an incredibly strong and brave woman and I don't know how, <laughs> I, I, I would be a puddle on the floor in comparison to her so I've got nothing but admiration for her honestly. Let's move on to the one you've all been waiting for. In outside Lou and there was a little step and I remember sitting on that step writing my first kind of song poem thing. So living here, I had this like big master plan that, yeah, somehow I'm going to, you know, get rich and famous. <laughs> and that was the dream. I was in the Spice Girls. I always, when we'd enter a room together, you feel a little bit more confident when you're in a pack. That sort of female support, that understanding, that connection that I will only ever get from them. If you just woken up, here's the biggie today. Jerry Halliwell has left the Spice Girls. Is there life for the other four? We'll have to wait and see. So now we obviously get to talk about so many people's favourite Spice Girl, Jerry, Ginger Spice. The one that so many thought gave the entire band all of that soul and spunk and that girl power. Like, she was the one that was most known for the girl power phrasing, of course, as well. Actually, women, you know, standing there strong we're together, you know, we identify with each other, we all probably feel the same. You know, we're out there, you know, doing the best we can, sticking together. Yeah. That's what girl power's all Female about. Solidarity. And there certainly is girl power here today in the studio. Girl power. Girl power! Girl power! That means... Who's about to do that? When well, you think about it, yeah. Churchill did that, didn't he? He did. If you think. There you go. So what's it mean, though, when you do it? Peace. Peace, man. Peace. Girl power. Peace and girl power. Now, I honestly find her totally fascinating from a purely transformational perspective because she really has shifted who she is depending on who she needs to be. It's very interesting with how she's controlled her image in such a way to be it from such a staunch feminist to now being a posh racehorse owner in her country estate. Feminism was, for me, felt like a very harsh bra burning word sometimes in life you have to hide vegetables in chocolate you have to wrap it up so it's much easier to digest you know that we was kind of you know these girls that you didn't have to lose your femininity you know you didn't have to uh, burn your bra and be behave like a man actually you can celebrate and you've that. got into trouble you know you said that basically feminism to you was about bra burning and yeah. actually the feminist thing came after you giving you a hard time I think it's such an ugly word. It really is. Or feminist. And I kind of think it's all levelled out. Do you? I do. And now she obviously only wears white, which is not my vibe. Um, I'm way too messy for that life. But she's done it as a way to look put together without putting in any effort. But the only women that I know that wear only white are villains in movies. Okay. <laughs> so let's just wind it all the way back to the start. 
stat, shall we? So she was apparently born in 1972. Bert Melby has said in quite a few interviews that no one actually knows her real age because she's kept that to be such a secret. And I can kind of see it, honestly. We all about the same age. Well, we still don't know how old Jerry is to this day. <laughs> <laughs> but she's the oldest and Emma was the youngest and me and Victoria and Melcy were kind of in between. But it doesn't matter how old you are, but she had a very clear understanding of ageism and sexism being so closely intertwined, especially in the music industry. But it doesn't also explain why she had so much more of the fear in comparison to the other girls because she knew that the top the clock the clock was ticking the clock was ticking for her so jerry's mum is spanish and her father was english swedish and a little bit of french it's important to note that since jerry does use those languages um with her songs but her father really gave her a lot of vintage things like vintage cinema which i mean respect no one gave me that other than me just discovering it myself and I was like, woo. <laughs> so she grew up in a council estate in Watford, which if you don't know, is a bit like state housing here in Aotearoa, New Zealand. But her family did manage to get her into the fancy private school. This was a life changing experience. The education that it gave me was fantastic. But it also had a lot of tradition. Scrappy kid from the other side of Watford coming here, wearing a boater and, uh, and really having to fit in with these girls that were from probably much more privileged backgrounds actually. Because obviously her being poorer um, did have an impact on like her experiences there because everyone else was saying all the fun things that they were doing and she's like oh <laughs> yeah and so she always felt like a bit of an outsider which I think at least in my mind that could possibly help to motivate her to go down the paths that she has gone down in this trying to actually become part of the upper echelon um, because you see all this around you, you see how much fun everyone else is having so you're like oh I want that too. I felt quite embarrassed of um, you know you really want to fit in it would be just just small things like when I bring my pat lunch in I could see that like that other people's you know, they have crisps and things like that. I, my mother would never, she couldn't really afford to buy things like that. But in a way, that made me go towards television and movies and music because it was my escapism. Jerry definitely has been nothing if not a hard worker, which is definitely work ethic that she got from her mother. So, so hard working. And from the age of 16, I've moved every six months. I have lived in bed sits and squats. I've been homeless, I've slept, I was like, the artful dodger i wanted to make it on her journey to fame she was like a go-go dancer in a nightclub you know kind of like how jenna marbles was to doing glamour shots because she wanted to be able to have headshots to give to acting and singing people but then she found out how much money you could make from it and she was like oh that could help and 200 pounds i was like oh my god really <laughs> so anyway but to build up your portfolio what happens is they send the agent sends you sends you off to a photographer and so you'll do a nice headshot or something pretty. And they go, but in return, because you're not paying for it, you have to do some of his artistic shots. Oh, yes. And so I'm late teens. I've got no clue about protecting myself. Are you I'm... proud of those pictures now? Do you know, when I saw those pictures, I actually feel quite sad because I kind of see the innocence and naivety in the face. It's not... I don't feel, look at them and think I'm... I don't think they're empowering it at all. I'm not ashamed of them. She also became one of the regular girls on The Price is Right in Turkey. Um, it's, it's a show that went by a different name, but it's effectively The Price is Right. And that was where she actually got asked for her first autograph and got like little saplings of what fame could be like. But then her father passed away and for six months she went into a deep period of mourning and sadly this is where her own ED got really really bad and she would control things like she lost all motivation for stuff but then she turned to food as a way of control and uh, it's really really sad to hear her talk about this honestly. She's also included this in her books. I was distraught. You know I was just got into a continual state of depression and over analyzing everything and I got starting just getting anorexia as you know just did not want to live in you know in the, the real life I really didn't I didn't want to interact with anybody I'm absolutely gutted sometimes that I don't have a father in my life um, and so I just turned all that pain into that like right I'm gonna make it and I was almost militant with the girls. I know that looking back, I probably wasn't the easiest person. And it wasn't until I left the band, I think that's when I started to really feel
So after she was dragging herself out of this period of mourning, she answered the same ad as the Spice Girls, but <laughs> she kept on evading the first like rounds of it to try and get into like the round where there was only 12 other girls. Um, she, she even said this herself that she sort of blagged her way through it. Now you will never really pinpoint the exact excuse um, that she was really genuinely standing behind because she said that she was visiting her grandma in Spain or that she was sunburned or that she was sick or whatever. You never really know, but she managed to blag her way through. She did also blag her way through that as well, acting like she was like Mariah Carey, obviously without the pipes. But it was her personality and her spunk and her like joie de vivre, whatever you want to call it, like that was what really caught the eye of the other people um, that were looking for this manufactured girl group, which they obviously took over and made their own. We are doing exactly what we, we want to do. We're pursuing a dream. If, I'll tell you what, there's millions of kids out there who want to be pop stars. Obviously, with all of these interviews that I've watched, she definitely does come across as a spokesperson for the whole group repeatedly. Oh, now I'm really gonna get it. No. Everything, like, every opinion I'm gonna say in front of this lot is just gonna... No, 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 no. Right. Oh, you know, you you calm down, down, calm down, eh? Eh, 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 no, I, I do know what you mean. No, because she gets... But I think, no, who influenced about the army trousers? Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, I, no, I think I've rubbed onto them in a positive yeah, way. Think... Whilst there's always an appearance of an egalitarian, diplomatic nature, I kind of personally feel like she always really wanted to be the leader, you know? Rah! That is like whoosh. That is fantastic. Shut up now. Uh, I like Scott. <laughs> Read it on. Why are you even talking to her? Sorry, man. Sorry, man. It's got a lot of colour in there. Jim, 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 Do you know what I mean? You've got all sorts. Okay. okay, for you at home, the movie is an adventure, it's a thriller, it's a drama. And even if it's not just about us, it's about, you know, London in the 90s. And I'm going to talk and talk and talk and talk until someone butts in. What is she trying to say? Even if you don't like the Spice Girls. I like it! <laughs> Even if you don't like the Spice Girls, then there's lots of other things you've ever attacked anybody. All we've done is just stood up for ourselves and have this element of energy and humour with us. So, you know, when people criticise us, I think that's, you know, that's their own insecurity or own negativity. Do you know I what I mean? That we're yeah. highlighting, I don't know. At the end of the day, that's what we're about. Positivity. We've broken a few brown boundaries, haven't we? You know, with breaking America and going into advertisement. You know, that's probably why. Jerry, you really should take a breath in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting on one. She's gonna heal over on us. <laughs> and so obviously with that tension between her and Mel, because they're both kind of more alpha even though that word has been corrupted now by incel men. That struggle was very challenging. I've spoken already about her relationship with her and Mel. It was an amazing feeling to have somebody that was as brave as you, that would absolutely, if I jumped off, she'd jump with me. That somebody that she had guts, which I really, really admire. It was such a nice feeling. But she did also have a very close bond with Victoria. And Victoria had a fantastic business a sense. I have to say, I loved being being a band with her because no one was ever going to rip us off with Victoria in the band. Mm. She was so good at it. Because Victoria also got a lot of hate from the press as well, I think that both of them had quite a strong connection in the way of like being able to manipulate things and use things to their advantage. Jerry more so. Jerry best kind of PR stunts were pulled by Jerry, definitely. She got hated on for being the slutty one, or being too feminist, or not knowing anything about feminism, to being too much of a loud mouth, and just anything that they could throw at her, they did. Like, men surveyed her like a prey, and treated her like a blow-up doll. Even in so many interviews I've seen, even after she went through transformations, they kept on trying to drag it back to the way that she used to be, and the fact that she did these glamour shots so I do understand why she put that distancing there between it because hey once you've taken your top off once for pictures that means that you're a sure thing right and that means that you're worthless um god I hate this timeline would you do that again would you appear naked for any uh... I don't know I think everyone's seen enough of my flesh and I'd like well, to maybe, kinda... wait a minute speak for yourself <laughs> And with all of this fame and everything that was going on, her ED got so, so bad. Like, 
all-consuming levels of bad. She got into binging and purging, she would control everything that she possibly could. With the insurmountable heights of fame that they reached, it was like they were in this pressure cooker environment of them going everywhere all at once and never actually having a chance for anything to sink in and feel like you could know yourself and whether this was what you wanted to do. When my father died, it really kicked it off. I stopped eating. It's a way of not engaging. And, and one of those things, you know, so you don't sit at family dinners. You don't, I just completely emotionally shut down. We all use different tools to get by, you know, coping mechanisms. And for me, mine was controlling my body weight and or abusing food. I'd either be on a diet or comfort eating. And there was a time when I started being bulimic and no one would notice it because your body weight stays this pretty much the same. You get a little bit bloated around here and your eyes water, but it's bloody dangerous. It takes so much. I admire anybody that reaches out and says, you know, I can't do this alone. You could say now, though, Jerry, that you've conquered your uh, attitude to food, that your attitude to food now is a healthy one, mm. or do you still I have to check yourself? I think I definitely have, if I'm honest, yeah, important to check myself didn't, and have that balance, definitely. Didn't yeah. Robbie Williams help you with that as well? You became friends with Robbie, Yeah, do you, you know what? I have to say, he definitely told me, pointed me in the right direction, yeah. you know, of where to go to get help on, because he spotted it, I was very bulimic. Yeah. And he was going, you need... To and, and I think it's one of those things, like when you're having a problem, it's quite ouchy when someone points it yeah, out. Yeah, he yeah. actually said a salute, gave me a solution maybe six months before I actually took it. So I was very grateful for that. Yeah. So if you hadn't have done that, where do you think that might have? I'm led sure you? it may perhaps it would have got there eventually, but you know you will get, get different bottoms. You know of, but thankfully managed to you know sort, which I'm mm. incredibly grateful because I want to be a good role model for my own daughter. And and of course, she used this excuse a lot about the breast cancer thing, saying that she felt like just because she couldn't do something herself with just her name stamped on it, that everything just got too much for her, it became too big, and that was when she escaped and literally ran away. I think meeting Mandela is just one of those, an absolute privileged moment. He was charming and gracious and, and humble and welcoming. So to be able to have met that man of that stature it was just amazing. You're as young as the girl you feel, and I'm 25. <laughs> so when I got back to the UK, I made the biggest decision of my young life. After days of speculation, Jerry Halliwell, otherwise known as Ginger Spice, has confirmed that she has left the Spice Girls. But naturally, as we became more famous, that, 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 that's going to change. The others are finding their confidence and their, their, own, their own voice, quite rightly, too. And so that dynamic's going to change. That was very hard to adjust. I thought that would be so dignified to end it like that. The end of the American tour, you can't get better than that. You know, you've done it. You know, we've brought it to the max. The point came when I was unable to do a breast cancer interview. And I thought, you know what, I've got to do this, you know. It's like when you leave a marriage. You can't say, oh, we got divorced because of just one particular reason. She has admitted that she was just being a brat and her whole first album was basically an F you. Actually, first of all, I launched into my solo career. Mm. There was a lot of ego in there. It was like, right, you don't need me, well, F you. But like I've said so many times, with the impacts of fame, none of us really will ever know or can fully comprehend how invasive it is and how it will really impact someone. So, so we can't really go casting so much judgment on people when it's something that humans aren't really able to cope with. Like, that is a lot, feeling like you're constantly being surveyed and knowing that people are talking about you all the time. Now, she did allude to it being Mel B's fault initially <laughs> and, you know, like, they... Because they had the closest relationship and because of them knowing the meanest things to say to each other, yeah, you can kind of understand uh, those cutting words <laughs> having a big impact. And I can also have a bit of empathy for the different transformations she's got under, even though I don't really agree with all of them, honestly. And nobody can say that she didn't know what she was doing. I mean, being reborn from a British flag, um, I don't know if I can say this word, um, panties? Can I say panties? Buried Ginger Spice in the song Look At Me, which is a banger. And the thing is that all of this stuff worked. And she became a goodwill ambassador for the United Nations Population Fund, UNFPA, in 1998. And she went on to auction off so much of her iconic stuff to get rid of the old her. 
Now, as someone who went through a similar sort of cleansing um, of like things that I didn't want to have in my life anymore after we went vegan, I can understand like that want to just shove everything away. I really, truly can. She continued and still does continue with a lot of different philanthropy work. Now, relationship-wise, she's obviously married to Christian Horner now, you know, like the fancy Formula One person. The man with whom she was the other woman. Well, I mean, kind of. Now, this is all alleged, but like timelines... They say that they both got together six months after dumping their respective partners, but you know, they've been best friends for years and nothing had happened. The thing is that he actually left his partner of 14 years a few months after their first baby was born. So his parents were so unhappy they did not turn up to the wedding. And also Jerry and Christian's wedding, in my eyes, was modeled straight after Kate and Williams because she even got the same designer for her wedding dress and even like the same bridesmaid dress designer like seriously now jerry has not exactly been subtle about her desire to want to be part of the upper crust the upper echelons of life must be able to afford first class travel <laughs> with a healthy bank balance bigger than mine <laughs> <laughs> okay that sounds really shallow and again, in my mind, my opinion here, I think that she's designed herself to be like the most palatable version of herself to be able to fit into what should be that sort of mold, you know, like all white wearing, country loving, but not really like elevated country loving, philanthropy doing, white woman who is like soft and softly spoken and proper and everything's much more above board now and yeah, I'm... I definitely feel like uh, there's been more than elocution lessons that she's been taking. Now, whilst I do honestly believe that the charity work is like something that is very true to her heart, it definitely is a thing that rich people do. Not only is a tax write-off, but also because it looks good. I mean, if they just pay the taxes that they should, the world could be a whole different place, huh? Her accent has changed, the way that she carries herself has changed, the way that she talks has changed. Like, you still sometimes get, like, a few cheeky glimpses of her, but it's very much done in a, oh, weren't we so funny back in the day sort of way, as opposed to it being, like, this is who I am. Um, but I guess we never really will know the real her. Um, same as for any celebrity, really. Any person, even. Like, a lot of people can be presenting who they want to present. I mean, how I edit myself for these videos, you know, I literally cut up the parts where I, like, fluff up all the time. <laughs> like, honestly, I don't know how to feel about Jerry because I had so much respect for this scrappy girl who would make her clothes and would literally jump about anywhere to be able to, like, get to where she wanted to go. Even that Union Jack dress, she was the one that asked her sister to sew the tea towel on there and also did the peace sign on the back. And she used literal car paint to paint her boots red. Like, I've got so much admiration for this scrappy girl that was like really loud and out about girl power and trying to empower people. And then to see her kind of like reverse things and say that she's not a bra burning feminist, even though that never happened. And to say, and to really, really try and emphasize the point that it's about men and women in feminism and kind of leaning towards men's rights things and her more conservative leaning on things. I mean, Theresa May. She, I've got an opinion. She's on a great that. dancer. She oh is. my goodness, you know what? the dancing. I, you know, everybody, and you can ask, this is a mixed bag. Yeah. You know, whatever we wear, whatever we do. But one thing I feel like, you know what? We should, uh, not should, but, we, you know, support each other, yeah. whatever it is. Right now, Britain, come together, whatever it is come together and sort our solutions out together. That's the most important mm. thing. Don't have to agree on polit politics and stuff like that. It's bigger than that, mm. you know. And you can see her just support a woman, you know, doing the best she can, and that's it. I think, mm. you know, everyone's politically different, and that's okay. Mm. That's it. Would that be fair? Yeah. You know, and, and not an easy position. Can you imagine being no. that? Yeah, yeah. not like easy. That. You know that I'm a dirty, dirty lefty here, right? So, um... I don't really have a lot of patience for the 1%. <laughs> so whilst part of me can understand some of the transformations that she's gone through, it's also like you always wanted to elevate others and the whole appeal of the Spice Girls was that they were like everybody else and now she's purposefully separated herself from everyone else. Along, <laughs> along with all the gatekeeping and the only way for a woman to gain legitimacy, even though like all of these women were rich in their own right, like we can't deny that. But for her to gain legitimacy, she had to marry into it and then become this person. There's a lot to say about that and the many issues around that. And lost her roots in a way that feels completely 
inauthentic, at least to me personally. You may have different opinions. If you do, honestly, I, I would rather have a more positive take on it than what I do. <laughs> she also changed her religion from being agnostic, which is basically like not believing in anything, to being Christian, which is quite a jump in order to be with Christian. Yeah, 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 you can be anything. You can be sexy and fantastic, you know, and be on Vogue. You don't have to be perfect. That I is think, the 90s. Think, well, and you don't have to be of... dependent on a man. No. No. There's just a lot of things that trouble me about it to transform to be this role as opposed to you as a person. Even though she says that she's being her authentic self, it's like, does that mean that everything else was a lie? I don't know, I don't, mm. Anything that I see that she's kind of had a hand in working in, like her level of control over how she speaks, how messages can come across, everything. Her level of control is so precise, it feels manufactured to me, it doesn't feel authentic. And that's part of my trouble here, okay? She looks happy and that's all we can really ask for for people. I've, if this has helped her get out of like that awful mental state she was in the past, that's a good thing, right? So we should be happy about that. So now you've heard the abridged versions of the Spice Girls and their individual stories. Hopefully you can understand what I was saying about their individual journeys and quite how different they are and the reasons why I personally don't think that they'll all be together again on stage. I don't think that's going to happen. I'm at peace with it, sort of. Makes me a bit sad, but that's okay. But also, I don't want hateful words in my comment section, okay? You can critique something at the same time as being respectful, and it's like, I always try to do that, whilst I don't agree with, like, some of the things that have gone down with what the girls have done. You can, you can still be respectful of it without being, like, sexist, ageist, fat shaming, whatever, like there's no need to go down that path because there's legitimate things that can be criticised about people whilst appreciating the holistic view and I hope that that comes across in these because I never want to have like a smear campaign about people because that's not, that's not the content that I want to make and that's not the person that I want to be. I want to have a fulsome view. Now if you made it all the way to the end, please leave your favourite Spice Girls or one of their solo songs in the comment section down below. I'd love to know what yours is. And honestly, the next video I'll be doing is going to be much shorter and fluffier, I think, because these have been a lot. <laughs> my entire life is consumed. I can't hear any other music in my head other than Spice Girls or these girls' songs at the moment. Anyway, I thank you lovelies so much for watching and I will be back next Tuesday. Take care of yourselves. Bye. Something very, very important I should have said a long time ago. <laughs> To, to Emma, to Melanie, to Melanie, and to the fans, is that I'm sorry. I'm sorry I left. I was just being a brat, um, <laughs> and I want to say that it's just so good to be back with the girls that I love and with you, love. I miss you. We just love you.